period. Right. That's enough. Let's crack on. Let's get the boys <laughs> on from the Royal Navy and hear what's got what they've got to say. So it's episode 50. He's just making sure he's all right before he gets himself into trouble. He's all right. Are you fiddling with the uh, heating controls? That's exactly what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm the the chief diver. So I'm second in charge of the sun diving unit two. Um, my main role is looking after the manpower, the equipment, um, and the day to day life uh, of, of the actual unit, and to make sure that we can go out and provide those diving tasks the EOD tasks that are called upon um, and that we're providing that service on behalf of, of the Navy. Okay. And I am uh, the commanding officer for Southern Diving Group. So um, there are two units, one based in Plymouth and one based in Portsmouth. Uh, Mike is the, the chief for the, the second in command for the Portsmouth based unit. Uh, and I oversee all of that activity to ensure that um, my group can provide diving and EOD to uh, for the Navy, but obviously to defence as a whole. And you're called the Southern Diving Group, is that right? That's correct, yes. Uh, we're, we're part of the, the Fleet Diving Squadron, so there is a, a group based in Scotland called the Northern Diving Group, um, and they, they provide a similar capability to our own, uh, and they do everything, if you think, north of the Humber Line, Whereas we conduct um, all that activity south of the Humber Line. In terms of the training, obviously it's quite secret. Um, but how did you find the whole process? Did you, do you, well, do you get a lot of people that kind of don't make it, or is it quite a sort of high percentage of sort of qualifications? So it's um, you, like like now, it's, it's you do get a high percentage, and the people that that don't make the cut are those that take themselves off or sustain an injury through the process which is generally no fault of their own um, and a lot of them get fit again come through and then they're successful um, but the, the physical side of it is achievable and then you're doing a lot of lesson based activities to obviously learn about the kit physical diving to be able to look after yourself as a diver work as a team um, and, and that's a, the main ethos is it's not individual diving it's all about being part of that team and how you work together um, so yeah, they've got to take you out of that comfort zone, and that's why we're military divers. Yeah, and you know you're you're, you're training to be that element in time of war. And so do you each have a favourite bit of equipment, dive equipment that you can't do without, or you wish you had? Uh, in actual fact, yeah, I have. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> My lucky speedos. No, so far, John. <laughs> what, what does that say? Bomb disposal on the back and then the branch badge there. <laughs> he doesn't wear it, does. really, does he? Every time uh, I go diving. Thankfully, he's usually wearing a dry suit, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Some things that I don't need to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can't unsee them now, can we? No, no sad, sadly not. I've got to work with him tomorrow. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, I, th I think my favourite bit of dive kit is the one that I go down with and I can come back up with and it keeps me going. I don't, I'm not a fairly, <laughs> so I'm a fairly simple beast. Um, I don't know. No, I haven't really got a, a favourite. A bit I could do without. I can go without my knife. Fins? You look silly, wouldn't you? You look silly without your fins, Steph. I don't like, I don't like a hood. I, I can't clear my ears properly if I wear a hood, so I end up having to cut holes in the side to to let enough water in to enable me to clear my ears. Then he's, then he's well, even, even in the cold, you don't wear a hood? No, no, I'll, I'll wear a hood, but I, I, um, if it's cold, but I'll, I'll cut um, a hole for my to let a little bit of water into my ear, because <laughs> otherwise I can't equalise. 